We're going to have to get serious now. This is what, the, this is what President Clinton has been saying. It's what Bush said. We're going to get serious now. And this is just, it's a ga again, this game that the, they play with the Muslims. But we're in a deep trance, we're in a sleep. Now, that, the first aspect, the political, embodied by the constitutional government, separation of religion and state, which is implemented now in the Muslim countries as well. You see, they say the state religion of Egypt is Islam. Then why then are young Muslims, whether they're political activists or not, if they grow a beard and they go to the masjid for Fajr, they're either followed by police or they're put in prison. If the state religion, according to the constitution of Egypt, is Islam, then why are Muslims persecuted for being Muslims? Why? This is a question we have to ask. The state religion, all the Muslim countries have in their constitution, the state religion is Islam then why do they treat the Muslims the way they should, whether they're politically active or not? I mean, I'm not going to get into a debate about harakat and what, what's right, what's wrong, but I'm just talking about simple Muslims that grow a beard and want to pray in the masjid, they're persecuted. If you're an old man, you can go, it's not a problem. Once you're all bent over and they know you're not going to a jihad threat or something like that, right? I mean, even your takbir is pretty weak. They're not worried about it anymore. It's called ajuz. They don't care about the sheikh, that kind of sheikh. They care about other type of sheikh, not the old man. They're not, they're not worried about that. So this is the secularization of the world. This is what's happened. The next, and they're doing it in Saudi Arabia. You will see the secularization of Saudi Arabia is taking place. I mean, the Saudis have never really implemented sharia. They implement on poor people. That's called jahiliya. According to the Prophet, hukum al jahiliya is that you aqam al had ala dhaif wa tarak al ghani. They, they apply the had punishment to weak people and leave rich people. That's jahiliya. That's not Islam. That's not sharia. Whether you cut off the hand or not. If population control is a type of seriousness. Who knows what they'll do? They tell us we're overpopulating. Read the, their own studies. They pay people in certain European countries to have children. Right? Do you know that? They pay people, white people, they pay them to have children. And yet they're sterilizing Muslim women all over the world. So if, if you're really worried about uh, population control, why don't you just bring some of those Muslims to your country? Every, all those Muslims want to get passports and become part of the EEC. You get, you'll get lines of them outside the embassy. Just, we need population people. Right? So they don't care about the earth. They don't care about the overburdening of population. No! They see brown people getting too many, Muslims getting too many. We have to scare them and say the earth's overpopulated, you can't bear this thing. And yet they pay people to have children. All right? This, I mean, this is a reality. We shouldn't be fooled by these games. The, the next thing is the economic contamination. Haman is the economic power. This is the banking system. It becomes, everybody has their plastic card. Right, this is the, the number, everybody buys and sells with the number of the beast, according to the Christians. The Christians talk about the Antichrist, in their own book it says, they won't buy or sell unless they have the number of the beast. Your number is this number they give you on the plastic card. They have already have a move, I need somebody to get her relaxed. I can't talk with the screaming. The, the, the nice, that's an obedient baby. <laughs> the, uh, the, the next thing is the economic control. You will buy and sell with the number. You have to have a number to buy and sell. Right now they're still using currencies. They are moving already to eliminate currencies. They want to have debit cards. And there's already massive propaganda to convince people that this is to our benefit. If you think of the actual impact. And look, don't think this is, I'm fantasizing here. Seriously, this is happening before our very eyes. You are now in the United States. The vast majority of transactions happen with cards. You go into the grocery store, you use your ATM card. You go into any, the gas station, you have automatic gas. You just f slide your car through. This is an absolute control. The one eye that is watching everything has complete control. The moment you slice that thing, they know where you are. All they have to do, if they want to punch, they put your number of your credit card, which they all have access to. There's no private property, privacy, all these things. Forget about that. They study you. They know where you shop, they know what type of books you buy, if you buy, they'll, they'll trick you into buying these preferred reader cards and things. You go to a bookstore, so you want to join up with the preferred reader, and then whenever you buy a book, they literally print in the books you're buying and then turn the card. This is what they do in the United States. And then they do statistical analysis of what type of people are reading what type books. 
Because they want to know. The FBI in the United States, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, will check yearly what books were checked out in the entire United States with computer analysis. So they know exactly what books people are reading. And then they see what type of segment. That's why statistics, they love statistics because they can work out, see what type of people are reading political books, what type of people are reading pornography. Now they know. And when you download on these things, not you, and I, nobody should be, but these people downloading pornography on their computers, they know exactly what they're watching. They know what they're watching in their houses. Out of the 20 most downloaded uh, uh, things, eight of them were pornographic uh, things that they were doing. You see, this is their great technology. So they have all this wonderful, vast, extraordinary, complicated technology, and there they are, these people having virtual sex with their machines. I mean, this is, this is us philosophies. Look at what the shaitan does to human beings. Turn them into pathetic creatures in front of electronic impulses stimulating their, their neurological cells until they, 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 they enter into this. I mean, this is pathetic. But this is their system. This is what it offers you. Virtual life. Virtual philosophy. Virtual religion. Virtual communities. Virtual sex. This is all, no, we want the real thing. This is a Muslim want the real thing. We want human transaction. So the next thing is economic thing of the Dajjal system is to eliminate money so that you only buy with the number. You, everybody has to have a number. And they're moving towards it. This will also eliminate free trade between people. In other words, you have to pay taxes on everything that you do. And I'm not advocating that you don't pay taxes. <laughs> Right? For people, you know, we're in the United Kingdom, we respect the laws. I saw on a television program, a Muslim telling them, we don't have to obey the laws in the United Kingdom. Where did they get that hukum from? Who, who, what, what alim gave them that fatwa? If you don't want to obey the laws, make hijrah to a place where, where you follow your own laws. If you're living in the United Kingdom, you obey the laws. That, this is Islam. Because it's for maslaha. وَالضُرُورَاتُ بِحَ الْمَحْضُورَاتُ It's an usul, study your usul. But the, the point is, is that the economic system is being enacted within, I would say, Allahu Akbar, but between, within 10 to 20 years, uh, the, the money, this type of money, they're working out very day, night, night and day to f find out ways of eliminating current, currency transactions between people. It's going to be hard, but this is what they want to do. The next thing is the military, which is Junuduhuma, the armies of Fir'aun and Haman. The, the, they have to have an army. This, the United Nations in the attempt to create a world army that will literally police people in the same way like uh, Noam Chomsky has mentioned it becomes like a mafia protection agency. If you're not paying up, then they send the mafia in to break some arms, break some legs. This is what they do. So that they have a, create a world army that will begin to do these things. Now where in all of this, all of these things that are happening, where then are the Muslims in the midst of it? We are the wrench in the works. I mean literally, we are the wrench in the works. Now there are other groups that are problematic. The, the, there are... Is, is the Adhan? Yeah, because we're, it's, a, it's a Hanafi, late, late Asr prayer here. So we better pray Asr. No, no, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. And, and, you, and I would have liked... I'm going to give uh, the Imam another 10 minutes just to wrap things up. And then we're going to open up for questions and answers. Uh, preference is given to written questions, but we will take questions from the floor, provided they, they don't go on for five, ten minutes. No, a quick, quick uh, question will be sufficient. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Where, where I left was about just the, these three aspects that are mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions of Fir'aun, Haman, and the Junood, which these, this, this trilateral uh, aspect of control and domination is, you can see this again and again historically, but with, the, with this new world order, also along with the military uh, aspect of the Junood or the minions or the armies, is the propaganda war that takes place. And really, the, the, in, in the Western Hemisphere, this war has been going on for a very long time to literally control the minds of human beings, to take over the thought processes of human beings. I mean, we, uh, there has been massive 
studies since the 1950s in uh, mind control. The Americans became very interested in mind control after the Korean War because of certain American soldiers that were uh, brainwashed during that period. And that term actually begins to arrive.